Hello and welcome to today's video. Uh, continuing the Keep Prison Single Sex playlist, uh, I'm going to look at Lord Falk's contribution in the debate when Lord Blencathra moved his amendment 97ZA. Now, what I know about Lord Falk is that he's another eminent QC who became a peer and he has uh, another role because he's the chair of IPSO, the Independent Press Complaints Regulator. So he does not make a lot of contributions in the House of Lords. I'm assuming some of that is in relation to this role that he has, which means that he's careful about being seen to be partial about things. And in fact, he is a non-affiliated life peer. Uh, let's look at his contribution. I have visited uh, a number of prisons, both women's prisons and male prisons, and I've also uh, sat where the noble Lord, Lord Wilson, sits, and I've answered a number of questions about the difficult question about where you house uh, those who have transitioned or purport to transition from the, usually from the male gender to the female gender. It's an incredibly difficult task that the Ministry has to perform. It's one which requires assessment. It's one that requires nuance. As a young barrister, I had the privilege of representing um, April Ashley, who died about three weeks ago, a pioneer in this field. Uh, she had changed from a man to a, a woman. She had had pioneering surgery in uh, North Africa. She had lived successfully as a woman for 30 years. When she was arrested by the police and uh, thrown into a male jail, she was philosophical about the unfair charge. She was less philosophical about the desperately inconsiderate approach that was shown by the police. The noble Lord, Lord Panic, referred to those who'd lived for 20 or 30 years. This amendment, I'm afraid, would deal with that sort of situation. I know it's well meant and uh, it acknowledges the difficulties, but really to legislate in this area, I suggest that would be extremely inappropriate. So I don't know what stood out for you about that contribution, but it was really clear to me that the um, the impact of meeting April Ashley during a time that we did not have the protected characteristic of gender reassignment, we did not have the Gender Recognition Act, we did not have the Equality Act, and the people who claimed a transgender identity back then were more likely to engage upon a process of medical and surgical transition, which we know now only about 3% of um, people expressing a transgender identity actually go through. So it's interesting to think about his contribution in that context. You know, the person that he has in mind when he's saying these things is April Ashley, who he has this personal connection with. So um, what do we know about him? How is he a persuadable? Is it worth writing to him? My answer is yes, I do think that it is worth writing to him. Uh, he has made interventions around the Police Crime Bill. He has been a defender of free speech in the free speech debate, as you would expect, you know, but he was very clear that he expects speech to be regulated. So he's not a believer in unrestricted free speech. He's a believer that we need um, hate crimes to form a kind of protective cocoon which allows us to engage in protected free speech. So I think that it would be interesting to find out more about his position with regard to where those lines are drawn in terms of the non-crime hate incidents that we've seen so many of, uh, the, check, the check your thinking police interviews, the thought criminals, that we've all become um, because I the other thing that I found out about him is that uh, he did intervene uh, to make some statements about the serious crime of voyeurism 
And this to me indicates that he does have a basic understanding of the risks to women that men as a class present. So I think it is worth writing to him and I think those are the ways in. I think if we if we talk to him as if he's a friend that has met, you know, a transsexual many, many years ago, who, you know, somebody who who was um Oh, making a lot more of an effort, I want to say. I mean, it doesn't change the fact that you can't change sex. But April Ashley was a, a, was somebody who came through in a culture where homosexuality was still illegal. Where um, he wanted to uh, marry a man um, and that wasn't, wasn't available until we had equal marriage. Uh, <sighs> It's not the same situation and I think that some of these peers need to do a little bit of catching up. Thanks for joining me for today's video. I'm sorry I look shocking today. I didn't get any sleep last night. I had a little bit this morning but uh, not very much. So thanks for putting up with it. <laughs> thanks for coming back to the channel and watching the content. Please do like, subscribe, share the love. And I'll see you again very soon.